Hi everyone, my name is Annabelle. And I'm Jenna. And we're environmental educators at New York State Parks in the New York City region. Today, we're celebrating Earth Day at Marsha P. Johnson State Park in Brooklyn on the East River. It's been warming up lately, and I don't know about you, but I really enjoy seeing flowers bloom and trees start to leaf out again. Oh, and not to mention, only a few short weeks till we start seeing fruits again. Me too, Annabelle. And we can thank pollinators for that. In fact, I read that three-fourths of the world's flowering plants and over one-third of the food that we eat depend on animal pollinators. So, for Earth Day this year, we wanted to explore how we can give back to pollinators for everything that they do for us. We can't talk about pollinators without highlighting the importance and the hard work of native bees. What's a native bee? I've heard a lot about honeybees, and I love a good cup of tea with some honey. So glad you asked. Honeybees were actually brought to North America from Europe. Native bees are bees that have always lived in this region and evolved right alongside the plants here, making them the most effective pollinators. There are over 4,000 species of native bees just in the United States. Unfortunately, native bee populations have been declining due to habitat loss and fragmentation, the use of pesticides, competition from invasive species like the honeybee, and climate change. The good news is, studies have shown that cities can actually be refuges for pollinators because they have a diverse variety of plants and not a lot of predators like in rural areas. However, life in the city can be challenging due to fragmentation of green spaces. So if you want to do your part to protect pollinators, here are a couple of suggestions that you can try at home in any type of outdoor space. Make a bee bath. Most insects get their water through their food, but the pollen and nectar that bees eat doesn't have a lot of moisture in it. When they do find water, it's usually in man-made things, like bird baths or pools, which are really large, so bees can fall in and drown. So, to knock things down to size, we're going to make a bee bath. A bee bath is simply a bee water feeder, where they can stop to rest and safely drink. First, try to observe where you might see bees in your outdoor space. Look around places that have flowers and plants. Even small flowers like clover and dandelions can be great bee food. Find a shallow bowl or shell that you aren't afraid to leave outside. Place clean and large rocks in the bowl, making sure that they reach the top of the bowl line. Place the bowl in your chosen location and then fill up the bowl with water, making sure the objects are still peeking through the top. And then be sure to change your water every few days to prevent mosquitoes from laying eggs in the standing water. Create bee shelters. Along with water, shelter is another basic need of pollinators, and that is sometimes hard to come by in an urban environment. Many of us know that honeybees create and live in hives. However, many of our native bees are solitary and have very different ways of finding or making homes in nature. Some burrow underground, while others will nest in old beetle tunnels and holes within dead trees and grasses. Nests are places for bees to lay their eggs and for their larvae to overwinter. Since dead trees and grasses can be difficult to come by in the city, we can recreate these nests to mimic naturally found holes that solitary bees use in the wild as shelter. Here at Marsha P. Johnson State Park, we use an invasive reed called Phragmites that can be found all over New York State. Phragmites stems are hollow and a great size for some of our smaller cavity nesting bees. So to make a bee shelter, you can use Phragmites or other dead reeds. If you do not have access to that, you can use commercially made bee nesting tubes that are sold online or at your local garden store. Secure the bundle in your outdoor space or place it in a recycled milk carton. You can also fill the carton with the extra gathered materials such as pine cones and sticks to attract a diversity of species.
If you do decide to do this, make sure to consult resources like the Xerces Society to learn more about proper management. Don't have tubes or phagmites? Build an overwintering site for bees towards the end of the summer season in your outdoor space. Use logs and rocks to make a crisscross stack with three to four inch gaps between. Leave this site undisturbed as much as possible so bees can occupy it for shelter. While water and shelter are crucial, bees can't nest anywhere without food nearby. Sugary nectar and protein-filled pollen are important nutrients for pollinators. Creating a feast for pollinators can be as simple as not mowing your grass or leaving that clover patch in your lawn or local park alone. Clover flowers are a fantastic source of nectar for our native bees. However, if you have the space, growing healthy and native plants is a great way to provide food for pollinators. Talk to your local garden store to find native plants that will work in your space. Some questions to consider are, what plant species are native to your area? What plants bloom at different times of the year? What soil type do you have? How much sun do you get in your outdoor space? And do you live near fresh water or salt water? Well, we hope you enjoyed our video and found something that you can try at home. Modifying your outdoor space by creating a bee bath, shelter, and keeping around native plants can really help out our native bees and pollinators here in New York City. Thanks for tuning in and happy Earth Day!